In this video, I'm going to explain Euler's method for approximating solutions to a given initial value problem. We're dealing with first order equations here. So this is your typical first order equation. You got the derivative of your function is some combination of t and y possibly, and it takes on a certain value, y sub zero, say at a given time t sub zero. So for instance, we might focus on this example for the the rest of this video, we have the derivative of your, of your function is one fourth times the function plus one, and the value of your function is negative two when t is equal to one. And we're going to find an approximate solution to that problem with a step size of 0.5 over the interval one to six, even though we could actually write down the exact solution to that differential equation to that initial value problem because it's linear. It's separable. We can use separation of variables or integrating factor or method of, of undetermined coefficients to find the solution. Okay, but we're more concerned about the numerical approximation for this. Here's a picture of the slope field to that differential equation. All right, remember that indicates to you at a specific point, these arrows are representing the slope of the tangent line to any solution passing through that given point. It kind of gives you a rough idea of how the solutions are going to behave. In this case, it looks like they're going to be mostly increasing in the window that we have plotted. The idea for Euler's method is that we're going to use the tangent line of a solution via the differential equation to approximate the value at a nearby value of t. And that's displayed in this picture. So you've got the slope field, you've got the slope of the tangent line, the, t the tangent line, pardon me, drawn through our initial point, and we're going to use that to come up with another approximate. And we're going to do that by sliding out the tangent line until we are directly above or below our next t value, our next approximate t, which in our case is going to be 1.5 because we're starting at t equals 1 and we're going to increase in steps of size 1 half. That's the specific idea. At any point you're going to that you're at, you're going to slide out the tangent line a step of delta t, which in our case is one half to the right, until you're above or below your next approximate time. So you define your t values, your initial time, your next approximate, so on and so forth. One key point to mention here is that to find the slope of any tangent line, and there and therefore to find the equation of your line of for any solution. Uh, passing through a particular point, you need to use the differential equation. The differential equation is key. That and the initial condition. It's going to turn out that that slope is going to be only determined by the right hand side function f only. You don't need to know the solution to approximate it. So here's an example. Suppose you want to take your starting point t sub 0, y sub 0. The differential equation is satisfied at that initial time. It's something that we don't use all the time when we're studying differential equations, but it's a key point. So it must be the case for any solution passing through that point, the differential equation is satisfied, and therefore the slope of your tangent line is going to equal its derivative of your solution. Okay. Now, we're not saying we know the formula, but that solution has to satisfy the differential equation, and therefore that derivative is equal to f of t sub 0 and y of t sub 0. Now by the initial condition, this is equal to your prescribed initial value y sub zero. The quantity on the right hand side here is completely determined by the differential equation via f, the right hand side function, the initial time and the initial value for y. Okay, you do not need to know the solution to compute that number. And that number helps you determine the slope. Okay, and that's the, the really the key point about Euler's method. At each step, when you go through to determine the next approximate, you're going to be using the differential equation to compute the slope of the tangent line at the point you're at, or where you're standing right at that point. Okay, so now I've got a little animation here to describe what's to help to see what's happening. All right, so what you're going to see is we're starting at our initial t and y value. So when t is equal 1, y is equal negative 2. We're going to slide out the tangent line until we get to above our next approximate time, which is 1.5, and then it gives us our new point. And we're going to keep doing this until we get all the way up to 6. OK, 
Okay, so you see we're sliding out the tangent line, then we have to recalibrate. When we get to the next time, we have to recalibrate. When we get to the next time, we have to recalibrate. We get a new tangent line here. We're going to slide out from above 2.5 to 3. And then we have to recalibrate. The tangent line changes, the slope of the tangent line changes. And that's all determined via the differential equation through its right hand side. Each point we're going through, we're marking a new point down, and this gives us our approximate solution. So the approximate solution is these points, these values, what these are ordered pairs, t's and y's. We're really concerned about the second coordinate, the y value of these approximates. Okay. You can also see this in the slope field if you want to also. Notice that's going to match up with those arrows well because those arrows indicate the slope of the tangent line to any solution wherever they're based. So this is the same picture. Again, it's just stepping up, one, going to the right of step sizes one half, but at each point where you stop and start a new one, you have to recalibrate, find your new slope, slide out that new tangent line to get to the next point. Okay, at the end of it, we're going to throw the rest of it away, and we're just going to be concerned about the points themselves, and in particular, the y values at the points. All right, and that's the idea behind Euler's method. Below here is the formulas for Euler's method. So to compute the next approximate y value, you take the previous y value and add on f of the previous time and the previous y plus delta t or times delta t, excuse me. This thing on the right hand side, this quantity on the right hand side is exactly the formula for the tangent line All right, at the point we're trying to find out. Okay, and the, the t values are as they were stated above. You just take your previous time and add on delta t, which is the same as taking your initial time and adding on k steps of size delta t.